It's our 10-year anniversary. Cinema Politico was started here at Concordia in January 2003. Thank you. And um, thank you for your continued support and spreading the word about our screenings. They're every Monday night, except for the odd Thursday or Friday. Um, usually in H110, but it's under construction, so we're here in DB Clark most of the time. Uh, you should grab a schedule on your way out if you don't have one, or follow us on all the social media, go to our website, etc. Tonight is a very special screening. We're very, very proud and excited to have Martha Stiegman's new film uh, and a short here, and it's very encouraging to see this huge crowd come out for such an important issue and two amazing films that you will be treated to momentarily. Um, I want to let you know that we will be showing a trailer from uh, one of the films for next week, and you'll also see the Cinema Politica 10-year anniversary promo video. Then we'll watch uh, the 22-minute film, and then the one-hour film, and then we'll have a discussion afterwards. And to get things uh, started, I'd like to invite Marie Boti and Marlene Adoyan up from Multimond, the production company that is a for social justice force in documentary in Montreal, and they produced the feature film that you'll see tonight. So a round of applause for them. Thank you. Bonsoir. Hello, everybody. Um, so this is Marie, and I'm Marlene. Um, we are from Multimonde. And uh, Multimonde est fier de participer à la production et la distribution du film Honor Your Word, Tenez votre parole, que vous allez voir ce soir. Euh, nous remercions Cinéma Politica pour euh, nous offrir une si belle vitrine pour ce film important. On vous remercie toutes et tous d'être présentes ce soir. It's uh, been a wonderful experience work working with Martha. Um, her infectious passion and devotion for the community of Barrier Lake um, nourished our, uh, our shared goals and values. Tonight, we're very, very happy uh, to have with us members from the community uh, for the premiere of On Your Word in Montreal. A very warm and special welcome to you all. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Marlene. Um, as a production and distribution company, we help to make films about burning social and political issues that bring light and inspiration into the right-wing darkened landscape that we are, find ourselves in. Films that are a joy to watch and to experience, and at the same time, which sharpen our understanding of the world and the forces of change within it. We're here to celebrate with Martha Stiegman, the director, without whose commitment and tenacity the film wouldn't have been made, and to pay tribute to the community of Barrier Lake, who generously welcomed her into their midst and allowed us all to share their lives through this film. Their struggle is part of the larger struggle of Indigenous peoples of Canada and the world who were on the front lines defending land, the environment, and livelihood, and which ultimately are linked to the survival of the planet. So we wish a warm and special welcome to the group who traveled all the way to Barrier Lake, and we look forward to seeing you afterwards at the party. And we have, uh, we'd like to ask Martha to come up now and take it, take it away. And we've got a little show of appreciation for her. There's so many of you, wow. Um, thank you everybody for braving the cold to be here with us tonight. We're so excited to finally be screening on your word to the hometown crowd here in Montreal. Um, I wanna say thank you to the team at Multimone for all of your support and collaboration in helping this project to, to, to happen. Um, thank you too to Martin and Peju and everybody at Barrier Lake Solidarity for the amazing organizing work that you've been doing over the years. In support of the Algonquins of Barrier Lake, it's been an invaluable resource for me to be able to tap into to your work to fuel this project. But of course, the big thank you goes to Marilyn Pukashish and to Norman Machuan, who's here somewhere. Um, there you are, Norm. Um, who made it all the way down from Barrier Lake to be here with us tonight, along with Sunny and with Clayton. <laughs> Thank you. 
and they're going to be they're going to be with us after the after the film to give us an update about what's going on in the community and and for us to have a talk about how we can find ways to support their struggle. But Norman and Marilyn, I just want to give I just want to say thank you. It's been such an honor for me to spend time with you and your families and your community in Barrier Lake over the past few years. Um, it's you know <laughs> opening your homes and your hearts. It's just, been, it's, it's just been such an incredible experience for me, such an incredible learning experience for me. And thank you for taking the time to work with me on this project. And thank you for defending the land for all of us. Um, I hope that the people here tonight leave as inspired by the strength and the courage of your community as I've, I have been over the past few years and that we stay in touch both through the website for the film and through Barry Lake Solidarity for you guys to stay in, on top of what's going on in the community. Um, and for you to find out ways that you can support the struggle over the coming years. So let's, Marilyn, would you let the first? I just want to say thank you for Marta for for um, everything that she's done and putting her, what she's putting herself through with us. It's just a little gift. Uh, there was, there's not a price to this because I thought this, uh, this is one of my teachings. My son made this at school. I'm the Algonquin teacher at my school. And uh, my son made this. There's no price, ti price to it, but it's something that I wanted to give Marta. Thank you so much. And this is uh, something for her baby, Ellis. <laughs> my little Ellis. Thank you, Marta. watch a movie. Um, before we, I just also want to speak to the first film. I'd like to acknowledge my co-director, Carrie Prosper, who is a former chief and a very passionate fisher from Bucknakeg First Nation, which is a Mi'kmaq community of about 500 people on mainland Nova Scotia, just shy of Cape Breton. Um, it was a very, it was, it was a tremendous joy and honor to work with Carrie in the making of this film, and you'll understand why in the next 22 minutes. Thanks you, everyone. Um, I have to say, it, it does happen at Cinema Politica screenings, but it is very rare, uh, especially, it's very special to be at this vantage point to see hardly anyone leave during the credits. So that's amazing. Uh, I hope that means that most of you are here to stay for the discussion that we're about to have. So I'd like to invite Martha and uh, Multimon, who, who, whoever's all coming up, to com come on up and please don't fall in the orchestra pit. This usually isn't open. Um, and if you do fall in, make sure you know how to play an instrument. So come on up. Um, OK, yes, let's have a round of applause for everyone in the film and everyone who made the film. I think that means they liked it, or they're just really, really feisty. Both! Both! Okay. Um, we have a couple of roaming uh, mics um, that are on both sides. So once we get started with the questions slash comments, uh, just put up your hand and try to keep it short so that uh, a lot of people get the opportunity, who want the opportunity to, um, to ask a question or make a comment. And I'll pass the microphone to Martha to get things started. 
Well, to get things started, actually, Norman is going to give us a little bit of an update about where things are at in Barrier Lake. And just so you know, we also have Martin Lukash from, uh, from Barrier Lake Solidarity up here with us as well. Yeah, great. Uh, I think that's a lot of people. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen this much people in any of the events I spoke at. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to see everybody here. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's important that people get involved and get educated in the struggle of, uh, you know, the indigenous people here in, uh, in Canada. You know, because, uh, you know, I've traveled, you know, with, uh, with uh, different organizations. You know, I've traveled with youth from Quebec, you know, where, where we, we traveled to Senegal, where we actually seen poverty in another country seen poverty in Brazil. No, but what they don't take the time is to look in our own backyards. You know, because poverty does exist and the exploitation of our indigenous lands exists in our own backyards. And it's always a huge struggle once you take it upon the government, especially when you're broke, you know, because it takes a lot it takes a lot out of a person to continue the struggle and you know it's i don't find it to be healthy for for people you know sometimes we get so caught up in the struggles that we are in that we forget to use uh to go out on the land and that's something that uh, that i that i always try to do is to speak for my people and also to 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 carry on our culture and you know there's there's there is uh, a lot of uh, problems you know that you know what the, what these governments you know with the way they're treating our people and uh, us too you know we recognize that there is uh, an existing uh, internal problems within our nation as well you know, but uh, we are working on that, and you know, it may not take a year or two. You know, it's going to take a while because the governments have been so, you know, busy tearing us apart. And uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> for the past uh, couple of months now, we've been, uh, you know, we've uh, erected blockades in uh, La Rouge uh, on our territory. You know, pushing the governments to to honor their agreements and to come back to a table to to discuss uh, measures to harmonize process while we while we wait for the the management plans to happen over our territory. And with the measures to harmonize process, you know, the the community has a are given a say. You know, to to oversee where which areas are significant for their family. And this, they map out and they put a protection zone on it, on buffer zones, you know. Uh, but we realize that it is impossible to to completely stop the logging, you know, because we did try and we did end up in courts. And, uh, you know, I, for one, was charged under the criminal code for blocking a road, you know. But uh, luckily I had a good lawyer. I got acquitted. It's very rare to have a good lawyer who works for free. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for the past couple months, we've had uh, the Minister of Natural Resources to sit down and uh, work with us on the measures to harmonize process. And we've, uh, you know, we've protected a lot of the moose yards, you know, bear dens, eagle nests, uh, medicinal areas, you know, uh, sites that are significant to the different families in different different sites so i'm glad to to report that uh, right now we're continuing continuing with our struggles in the community but at the same time, we're still trying to live, you know, trying to, trying to live as our, as our Anishinaabe ways, you know, the way we're supposed to. We still try to continue to hunt and, and trap, you know, to fish, 
we still continue to teach our lang uh, to teach our kids to use the language. You know, it's very hard. You know, considering you know we're living in the modern day today, and uh, we're trying to make best of both worlds for for our people, and not only for our people, but for for you guys, out, you guys out there as well. You know, because. We're not only doing this for, for our people, you know, it's for all nation, you know, all the users of the land. And, uh, you know, I'm still in school, me too. Me and Norman got elected as a chief, a chief and council position for the past two years. And for us, it's just another way to, uh, you know, to try and sit down again with the governments to try and, uh, I guess, negotiate what we've been trying to fight for for so many years you know it's just i guess another back door for us we should we call it <laughs> but you know the fight is there it's it's still uh we're not really getting not getting nowhere i guess but uh we're not giving up and we're still here <laughs> Uh, I think that one way of, uh, you know, to continue to support the community is through, uh, you know, educating the public and also writing maybe to your governments and, you know, just tell them to back off and, and honor the agreements. And, uh, yeah, and to, you know, just to, to educate yourselves, you know, like this gentleman was asking, you know, it, uh, it doesn't come naturally. You have to learn learn on your own as well and you know because the, the government uh, the Quebec government uh, you know they've been uh, ignoring us for far too long and I think it's time that they you know sit down with us and fully implement uh, you know a, a sustainable development plan <laughs> okay um uh, well, for the for the experiences we've had, you know, with uh, you know blockades and all that, we've tried to get the media people to come in there, you know, to try and help us out, to tell our story. But every time we would try to do something, the police are always there, you know, in the way, pushing away the people with the cameras. So most of the time, we're the, we're the only ones trying to show our message out to, to the public, to the world. And uh, the only way we've been able to do that so far is uh, the best way is Facebook. <laughs> 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 Facebook and, you know, the, the social media stuff on the Internet. But uh, we, we, we try pretty, we've tried pretty much of everything to try and get... Uh, our message across, you know, but most of the time it's through organizations what uh, these guys have formed in Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa. And then from there we try and uh, spread it out, you know, spread the word out through like this, their organizations. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, talks like this or videos. It's like Norman said, we're broke <laughs> for anything else. There's also a website, uh, BarrierLakeSolidarity.org. Yeah, it has a lot, uh, tons of information. You could go on there and uh, print out anything you want. I don't know. It, it smells different. Well, it's not a, it's not as natural, I guess. <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, if any of you guys ever want to come canoeing on our territory, you're more than welcome. <laughs> um, I know that's a. Uh, it's 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 tough, you know, because uh, you know when it, when it, when when it comes to the land, you know, it's it's very important, and 
No, a lot of our a lot of our people uh, attended the residential schools. I think we had about 80 to 90 students that went, and you know they they a lot of them were you know feeling that identity loss when they came back, and you know it was through the connection of the territory that that brought them back on their feet, that brought them back, you know, it, 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 they went back out on the land. You know, this is how they survived the residential school era. And, you know, with uh, with this Measures to Harmonize process, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot to ask the community members, you know, to compromise, you know, but uh, we understand that we have to be reasonable you know, it's hard for them to say you can cut here, but you can't cut there. You know, but uh, but really, can we do? Can we stop? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You know, because uh, you know it takes years, years to to fight this, to fight the system. You know, and uh, we have to try to the best of our abilities to to coexist and. You know that's what we've been doing is coexistence, and uh, it's a uh, it's it's important for all of us. Just uh, a little note, I guess, on that um, about the trilateral agreement. It was a it's an it was an alternative, you know, because we were being pushed into a land claim process, you know, where our people felt, you know, we weren't we didn't want to go to that direction, you know, where we're gonna uh, where we're gonna extinct our Aboriginal title and our rights. So there was a little door opening, you know, for us in there to have a say within our traditional territory. You know, where it says that, uh, where I guess the Queen back then, during the Royal Proclamation days, where it stated that, you know, Aboriginal people should have a say in their traditional territory, in their resources. And this is how the trilateral agreement was born. You know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna put our, our, um, what did you say? Uh, how did you call it, Robin? Yeah, we're not going to put our, uh, you know, what you were just saying now, you know, on the spot to use, our, to use that and to fight that. The point is we're not going to put something in there that's going to extinguish our right, you know, when we already have this agreement that we've been fighting for, you know, that's, that's going to open the door. That's, I guess that's the reason why the government doesn't want, want that, you know, because... It's going to open the door to everybody else that's, uh, you know, defending their, their title, their land, their rights, you know, which I think is a good thing. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the agreement that Barrier Lake signed in 1991 is, is so significant because it... Um, it attempts to, to kind of stick a wrench in the Canadian government's most fundamental policies when it comes to extinguishing and dispossessing indigenous peoples. So the comprehensive land claims policy that Marilyn mentioned is what the federal and provincial governments use against indigenous communities uh, who have never ceded their title. So there are vast areas of territory in this country, all of BC, most parts of Quebec, large parts of um, Labrador and, uh, and um, Nova Scotia as well, the Maritimes, where communities have never actually signed away their historic title to the land. And um, it's not just indigenous communities saying this, it's, it's the Supreme Court uh, of this country who, is, who has recognized this as a fact. And it's a big, it's pretty much the, the, the fundamental lie that the Canadian government is hoping Canadians never find out about. The fact that indigenous communities like Quebec have the right, basically rightful ownership over the land. And instead what the government does is it takes, um, takes advantage of the fact that communities are often uh, quite poor to impose this policy on them, which requires them um, 
as a, as a precondition for negotiating over um, any amount of their territory. It requires as a precondition that they swear um, to never assert their rights over 95% of their territory. And then they allow them to negotiate over 5% of that territory. They force them under this policy to take out loans. Across the country, there's been hundreds of million dollars um, taken out by indigenous communities, um, which they, they're used to, to, um, to demonstrate and provide you know, onerous amounts of research to prove that they have the right to this land. Um, and then, um, at the end of it, um, communities get 5% of their territory, not in collective tenure as they hold their land, but often in fee, fee simple, so individual property. So, which is part and parcel of this policy of, of assimilation that the Canadian government has been um, undertaking for about 130 years. So what's so special about, about the trilateral agreement is that, as Marilyn said, it backdoors this entire, entire policy, which is basically the kind of final policy of final conquest in this country. And the agreement was so subversive that the government didn't even realize what they had signed and so it took, the, it took the federal government and provincial government about five years to understand what the community had done. And then once they realize that, they've done everything they can since then to try to uh, ensure that this agreement never, never, never takes on life and, and collects dust on a bureaucrat shelf in Quebec City and in Ottawa. Um, um, probably the most, the thing that the, 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 our governments are most terrified of are, are growing alliances between traditional indigenous communities like Barrier Lake, who are the rightful owners of much of the land here, and, and people like you, um, students, youth, workers, immigrants. Um, they know, they know that, um, they know, they understand that Aboriginal rights and treaty rights and title that these communities have are the biggest obstacle to their vision, to Marwa's vision, to Harper's vision, to turn Quebec and Canada into a resource extraction state. And communities like Barrier Lake are on the front line uh, of that fight to protect our collective lands, uh, waters, and air. And um, it's when, when non-native people, masses of non-native people, as we start to see with Idle No More, start to lend support uh, to communities like Barrier Lake and to um, and to give them more power uh, on their land to be able to um, pose, a, pose an obstacle to this, uh, the greater we, all, we are all off uh, in the end. Um, yeah, we've had some uh, elected officials that have shown support. Uh, I don't even know all the... the the parties in Quebec or Canada. I know there's Elizabeth May. I don't know which party she's from. <laughs> she's a good lady. And we've had support from Charlie Angus. Uh, I don't think he's conservative. <laughs> you know, but we've had support. And uh, I think that's, I don't know, Martin would know all the, the support that came in. Uh, well, me, I think that right now it's, uh, it, you know, it's the Quebec government, you know, because, you know, they're the ones that, you know, we're, we're in, we're located in Quebec, you know, and uh, our, our community is, uh, you know, dealing with uh, the Quebec government, you know, to, to, to implement, uh, there's a recommendations that came out of the, the trilateral agreement and we've been pushing for the implementation of these Agreements. There was seven, and six of them was uh, was agreed upon by the Quebec government, and it's just the the seventh one that uh, that they have a hard time to uh, to even recognize, and that uh, the resource revenue sharing. No, <clears throat> the community had not the community, but the Quebec special representative at that time. It was uh, John Chiacha. Who, I think he's a former former cabinet minister, anyway. And uh, Barrier Lake special representative was uh, Clifford Lincoln, who was also a former cabinet minister. So they 
They both uh, made recommendations to recognize our territory uh, uh, as a trilateral agreement territory for Barrier Lake. Uh, electrification. Um, uh, I'm not even sure where, what else is there. But anyway, you know, uh, they didn't agree to resource revenue sharing and, uh, you know, they... Instead, what they wanted to do is they wanted to negotiate 43,000 cubic square of uh, our land, and they're telling us, you can do whatever you want there. You know, but uh, we told them we, we were not negotiating something, you know, that's already inherently belonged to, you know, the community's future generations. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, I think that's pretty much it. I, um, I once asked uh, no, uh, Michelle Tusky, who you saw in the film, if there was a word in Algonquin for a solidarity, because we were initially trying to come up with a, a name for the solidarity group. And uh, he said, uh, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but uh, Wiji Diamo Duin. Did I get it right? It was a, that turned out to be a much too long uh, word for, uh, for a solidarity group. But, um, but, but what I asked him what it meant, and, and he said that, um, it's it's the idea of 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 two people um, walking together toward a common end, and um, and I think that's one way that that the solidarity the, the network um, doing solidarity work with Barrier Lake conceives of of doing solidarity work. That solidarity is not um, it's not a one way one way gesture of charity or of help. Um, it's really part of a, a struggle for collective. Uh, liberation, um, um, and it's not—it's not just about the strategic alliances that I, I said a few words about earlier. That's really, really important. Um, understanding the power that um, masses of non-native people putting their backing behind indigenous rights uh, can can have in this country. It's also about, I think, learning um, from the indigenous uh, worldview, um, and you saw that really beautifully documented in, in Martha's film. The idea that in both films, that the land is not meant to just be taken from, it's meant to be caretaken. Um, that we need to um, not just, you know, envision our affairs in a financial quarter or in the range of a few years, uh, but, but of seven generations. Um, it's, about, it's about learning how to be better ancestors, um, which I think something, is something that I, I and many others have learned uh, from Barrier Lake is thinking thinking like that, um, and um, I think I think um, I think I mean I think we saw that with Idle No More is that more and more more people um, uh, willing to and and Indigenous peoples just approaching non-native people with an incredible spirit of generosity, um, which. You know, certainly shouldn't be expected of them after after you know the years of of flawed and destructive um, uh, and arrogant relationships we've had with them. But I think um, the last few years have shown that um, shown more than ever that uh, there is always a moment, there is always an opportunity for transformation if we seize it. Um, and I think the example that Barrier Lake has shown is a very powerful one, and we need it. Um, we need it to get across the country. We need this, this film screened in as many schools uh, and workplaces as possible. Um, we need to build non-native non people's uh, understanding. We need to build their understanding up, their ability to become effective, uh, responsible um, allies uh, with these struggles. I think, um, I think if that can happen, uh, what we are talking about is the, is the transformation uh, of this country. Last comments? Uh, no, I'd just uh, like to thank everybody for, uh, for coming out. And you know, it was good to see everybody. And I'd like to thank uh, Multi, Multi Mound uh, you know, for, and Martha for all the hard work all those years you know, of, uh, I guess, uh, struggling with the community. <laughs> you know, I'd like to thank Martin. 
you know, and everybody that was involved in the Barry Lake Solidarity. Isso me guess. And if you'd like to join us, we're all heading to McKibben's on Bishops now. We have a DJ who's going to be spinning, and we're going to have a nice time. Um, and if you'd like to get a hold of the film to screen in your schools, in your workplace, in your communities, um, you can look on the website, um, honoryourwordfilm.ca, or get in touch with Diffusion Multimonde, um, barrylakesolidarity.org. Check it out. Sign up sheets all around. Thank you so much. So one last time, thank you, Martin, Martha, Marilyn, Norman, all the people in the film who made the film, and keep up the solidarity work and the struggle. Thank you very much. <laughs>